him. Get the fuck out. You're a menace. Kevin's been making a lot of appearances lately. Yeah, I know. It's because he's the worst. He is. He's been here since the beginning, though. Yeah. You know, as much as part of the podcast as Satan. No, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't that. acknowledge Kevin as part of the podcast. Oh, wow. Honest. Okay. I don't like Kevin. Ooh. <laughs> we got a staunch Kev hater in the house. So, how was your Thanksgiving, boys? It was chill. Yeah, chill. Ate a lot of food. Nice. Of course. Praised. I praised all the settlers and the colonizers for giving us this gracious <laughs> day. <laughs> As is tradition. I said, thank you, colonialists. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Sounds like the an enemy of comics and chronic. <laughs> Colonialism and, and, and chronic. I mean, we say that and we're using... Apple laptops and <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not too big of an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are the facts. I just don't like I just don't like being complicit in hypocrisy. Uh, I call it out on all ends. Will you call it out for this movie? We're talking no. <laughs> uh, Well, no, because it was directed by a Latino and starring a Latino. You know what I mean? There's no hypocrisy. So no hypocrisy detected. I, uh, I get the feeling I'm going to like it more than you guys. But I will say this before we even get into it. I think any criticism that is said about this movie is pretty valid. But I also enjoyed it. Yeah, I didn't hate it by any means. I honestly thought it was yeah. really fun. Yeah, I thought it was I yeah. thought it was a fun movie. Like I just I just had fun. Yeah, yeah not a perfect movie, but yeah, a fun movie. No, by no means. No. But uh well, since we're getting into it. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> rock and roll. Baby. With a nice little Thanksgiving colonial segue. <laughs> 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 Maybe our strongest segue ever. Yeah. <laughs> ever. Well, welcome to Comics and Chronic, everyone. I am Jacob H. With me is Anthony Arnaccio and Cody Cannon. And today we are discussing Blue Beetle, the movie. Starring, and God, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. I don't know. I, 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 honestly, <sighs> I don't remember I wanna, any of their I names. I want to say Miguel. Oh, God. No, I mean, that's, no, the actor's name is, God, how do you pronounce X in Spanish again? I really forget. Anyways, it's X. Maybe it's Holo. That, like that's Holo. what I was thinking, Holo uh, Maradona. He's the main, one of the main characters on Cobra Kai. Yes. Yes, that's the first time I saw him too. Yes. And of course, he rules. He does. He rules. I thought he was great, to be perfect honest. Perfect like, casting. But genuinely, perfect casting, you know, total like Spider Man vibes. Yeah, you know? very Spider Man vibes. Yeah. I thought he was the strongest part about the movie, to be honest. Like, he, Jaime Reyes was the strongest part. I liked him. Yeah. I liked, easily. I liked George Lopez. <laughs> George man. Lopez. Yeah, George Lopez, too. Deathlock himself. I liked him. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I did like death. George Lopez, even though it's funny. I don't know. You guys know Ralph uh, Barbosa, right? Barbosa? Yes. yes. He, the, the comedian? The co- yeah, comedian. He was on uh, – did you hear his thing, Cody, when no. he talked shit about George Lopez? No. Well, I guess like a few months ago, George Lopez was somewhere, whether it was a podcast or something, and he's like, oh, you know, like these non- young new uh, uh, Mexican comics need to like – pay their respects to me because I paved the way for him. And so he was on, so Ralph was on Theo Vaughn's podcast and he was talking about that. And he's like, dude, I like, he's like, I'm just a Mexican who does comedy. I'm not like a Mexican comic, whereas George Lopez's jokes were all about being Mexican, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. He was like, he, he was like, Ralph was like, almost none of my jokes have anything to do with me being Mexican. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty hilarious. And then he was like, fuck George Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But he was funny in this. Yeah. I saw a clip recently of George Lopez being interviewed on a podcast or something where he said he went to one of the, one of those wax museums, you know, where they have like wax celebrities and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. uh, he was like, dude, I don't look anything like I did when I was younger. He's like, I went in there and was standing next to the picture and everyone just thought I was a Mexican dude trying to take a picture with George Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he talked to the owners and they were like, yeah, we're not going to update it. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> but it's true, like George Lopez in this movie doesn't look like the George Lopez in the George Lopez show no. like at all. He's not the one bouncing on trampoline. 
Orleans. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the family dynamic in this movie was a lot of fun. I agree. I, I liked all the family stuff. I liked his family. I liked the sister. I thought she was funny. She was a good actress. It was interesting yeah. to see like where the acting was strongest. I'll tell you who was the weakest for me personally. Uh, Jenny Cord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she wasn't really bringing she much. She was terrible. She also overacted a lot. She had like two big facial expressions. And I was like, all right, lady. It's like, tone it down a bit. So much of I felt directed her. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't. She was not great. I also didn't like the villain. Not Susan Sarandon. Oh, yeah, the but the, Carapax. Uh, yeah. Carapax. Well, yeah. That's a dumb name. I hate yeah. that yeah. name. It's like, I hate why? it. He's Omac. Which is like a classic DC villain, but he didn't look like it looked stupid, and it was just like a one note villain very easily. I was also yeah. like, why give him the name Carapax? Yeah, it was dumb. They gave him a little bit of a backstory. The backstory was cool, but why not have yeah. it be also like a Latino sounding name? Why Carapax? Yeah. Well, his real name he said was Ignacio. Ignacio, yeah. Which makes me think of Nacho Libre whenever I hear But yeah, like he wasn't a good villain. Yeah, I mean, it was just the generic, like, I'm a bad guy and I'm going to fuck you up. Also, the Omac didn't look like the comic Omac, which I would have no. almost liked more. Or I would have liked Yeah, it would have looked, it would have been awesome been if that had a better design. Yeah. Comic accurate Omac. Omac, for sure. Yep, because Blue Beetle was fucking. <clears throat> Blue Beetle was awesome. Blue Beetle was fucking comic accurate as fuck. You know, like he, Super comic his accurate. costume looked g- cool design wise. It looked comic accurate. It, it the CGI was good for it. I thought the CGI in this movie was yeah, great. The CGI, the CGI in the movie was great. There was just like one scene that I didn't like the CGI, and it's I think not I know even what that. You mean too. For me, it was when he first got to Cord Core, Cord Co, or whatever. Just like the way that building looked inside oh, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I was just like, I don't know why. That was the only time in the movie that the CGI like was upsetting to me. I was like, that building looks awful. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I was, for me, it wasn't that. Now I'm thinking, I forget what time it was, but there was only one time where I was like, oh, that CGI was a little iffy. But overall, especially because like I've seen like BTS video, like dude, that suit, the Blue Beetle suit, is very comic accurate. It looked fucking cool. All his like powers with the suit were fucking sweet. Yeah, yeah. His, like, his, like, like before the movie came out, I I kept seeing the scene where he, or maybe it was out already, but the scene where he has the sword, yeah, sword like sick. it's towards the end of the movie. That was it. Looked cool in the movie. It just it, like it was obviously taking a lot from Iron Man. For sure. In terms of like superhero origin and like the way he gets the suit. But do you guys remember the movie from the 90s, Star Kid? Yeah. You ever see that movie? I do remember that movie. I feel like, and, and uh, this is going to be even, I don't, maybe even crazier than me saying that the Dark Knight stole from Daredevil. <laughs> that uh, I feel like Iron Man and a lot of superhero movies like are, are taking from Star Kid because Star Kid, he gets this like exo suit. And the suit's communicating to him, and like it's that symbiotic relationship. You get the view from the inside of the suit. I feel like so many movies were or have copied that. Well, one might argue. I don't know when Starkid came out, but you sure Starkid's not copying Giver? Giver. What you know? Oh, what you guys know okay. about the Giver dog? Okay, Mar- is Mark Hamill in that movie? I think so. Okay, so maybe it is caught getting from Guyver then. So we got to go further back. Depends which one. Because Guyver, dude, people sleep on Guyver. A lot of people don't know. I know very few people that know of it. Guyver's 1991. 1991. When was Starkid? Starkid's probably 97. So then you're right about oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Guyver, so, bitch. Guyver. Starkid is my Guyver. But yeah. to you, to that point, okay then. So now you got, you you kind of got, because I was like, Starkid couldn't have made that up. It's def, It has to get from something else. You guys should watch a Guyver. It actually, actually, I haven't seen it in God knows how long, probably 20 years. But it, I remember as a kid, it was sick. It was very like Venom- same thing like Iron Man suit up where this alien like like gives this dude powers and he starts fucking like street thugs up and shit. Nice. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. It was like very also symbiotic. I like that. I like that that relationship he has with the suit. Yeah. Kaija Da or whatever. Kanashi? Yeah. I don't know. It was like Kanshi or something. Yeah, no, I think Cody got it right. Kaja Da, I think. Oh, was it? Kaja Da? Yeah, like it was. Like, I, I only know that because my son wanted the subtitles on. Yeah, I was watching with subtitles. You were? Ugh, I hate that. I usually watch <laughs> movies with subtitles. I'm not a subtitle boy myself. Me neither. Me neither. But I, go, I go raw dog, dog. 
<laughs> I'm not a subtitle boy, obviously, unless, except for foreign language movies. Agree. I will do if it's a foreign movie, I'll watch subtitles. But no, if I'm until I lose my hearing, I'm not going to read while I'm watching. Yeah, <laughs> I will do subtitles. Like I'm not such a stickler that I like if I'm with somebody who's like I need subtitles, it Ugh. won't ruin the experience for me. I but I will. I will be like yo if if somebody's like. Do you have a preference? I will be like, I prefer no subs. I, uh, one of my exes always asked that we put subtitles on. And I was like, oh, my God. And then, dude, my friend, he he's, he's like, dude, movies were meant to be watched with subtitles. And I was like, no, they literally weren't, actually. Like, I don't think Scorsese. I wouldn't go that far. No, he's like, I don't think Scorsese goes into making a movie. Be like, oh, man, I can't wait for subtitles to be all over this bitch. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I I wasn't always like that. And as I got an older, I started using subtitles more. Like, you definitely pick more up. Like, sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, yeah, I heard what they said. And then you see the subtitle, you're like, oh, shit, that's not, that's not what they said. Oh, there's some movies where, yeah, the lines totally get, like, you can't hear shit. Yeah. Um, Christopher Nolan, I'm looking at you. Most of, most of his movies, audio is very low when it comes to dialogue. And I'm not the only one to say that. His whole article. No, that's about, true. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. yeah. So, and I feel that. I've always felt that way. I was like, ah, come on, Christopher Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I also didn't care, even though I think she's a phenomenal actress, I didn't really care for Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon. Yeah, no. She, she didn't bring anything to this movie either. She's a cunt anyways. Is she? I think so. Oh. What did she? What did she do? Stepmom <laughs> with Julia Roberts. <laughs> First yeah. off, I love that movie. That's yeah, that movie's movie. incredible. <laughs> I think we. I think a long we've time ago we've it. talked we've about talked this. It. Yeah, we got to do a stepmom. We have to do stepmom. stepmom. Uh, no, she recently said at a pro Palestinian rally that Jews are getting a taste of what it feels like to be Muslim. And I was like, I, I think Jews have gotten that taste before. It's like, <laughs> like a new thing. That's uh, um, that's on video. So if you don't yeah. believe, oh, I no, I believe <laughs> you. I believe you. I, bu- I don't believe you're <laughs> slandering Susan yeah, Sarandon. No, words. it's just like it's just like all right, lady, get the fuck out of here. So I'm glad she died. I kind of wish we got to see her death. Whoa, did she die? Not in real life. Oh, in the car. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm glad her character died. So, Cody, have you gotten over your hate for families? Like, did that affect? I know. Did this movie make you like families again? <laughs> no. Uh-huh. Um, I, I was grateful when the dad died. I was like, somebody <laughs> has to. <laughs> I swear to God, when the dad died, I pictured Cody saying, yes, someone, someone died. God, yeah. there's so much, like, deep psychological trauma that goes into this <laughs> <laughs> trope of Alice. Yes. <laughs> like, Cody hates families and specifically when fathers die. <laughs> <laughs> We're digging deep, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just also, I, I like the family dynamic if truth be told. It was very real. As someone who grew yeah. up in like LA and then the Bay Area, places where you would very commonly see entire families in a house. Uh, you know, I, I, a lot of the, where I was like kind of poor growing up, a lot of the neighborhoods I grew up in were, I was like in the minority of white people. It was more predominantly Latino neighborhoods a lot of the time. And that was like very much, and like something I grew up with. My parents, it was like me, my siblings, sometimes my half uh, siblings that I don't really know. Sometimes my, or m- my entire life, my grandma lived with us. You know what I mean? So are you saying you're the white blue beetle, Cody? <laughs> I think Cody's saying he's the most Latino out of everyone here. <laughs> nah, Jake, you are definitely. <laughs> I like um, I like this scene, and I know it's a Latino a Latino thing, but it's definitely in my house too. Maybe it's an Italian thing too. The way they wake Jaime up is with the Vix. Did you catch that? His I think his yeah. grandma puts the Vix to his nose because the yeah. Vix is well, like after his like cure-all. first ride in the thing. Yeah. He was all like knocked out. Yeah. yeah. Vix isn't actually, I don't think it's going to wake you up if you're knocked out, but I like that they use it for that. Dude, I don't know. Vicks. I like Vix. I'll be honest. I, I do know that Vix, classic Vix thing. It didn't happen in my household. Jeez, yeah. Yeah. 
in my house. It didn't happen in mine either. They just yell at you to wake up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, same. no. It, not the thing that you use it to wake someone up. Just the VIX is kind of used as like a cure all no, for I know, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. In, in mostly like a lot of Latino, Hispanic households. Not in my household. Yeah, same. Not in mine. Uh, VIX is good. I didn't know it. I didn't do it. <laughs> That's the only way I could breathe sometimes as a kid. Like, I had such bad allergies. The Vicks will oh, open up your nasal passages. This is that classic commenting chronic medical advice. So, okay. So, the villain of the movie, weak, weak as fuck. Susan Sarandon was weak. Um, we love the family. And also saying the most generic racist shit. Yeah. She's Can't like, call- Sanchez, Sanchez, make yeah. me a taco. <laughs> like- and they totally underutilize <laughs> yeah. that dude. What, isn't he in What We Do in the Shadows? Is that the same actor? Dude, is that actor, Guillermo? You, yes, no. It, it, yeah, it's Guillermo. You know, it's funny. Okay, I don't know if you guys caught this in the movie. So on What We Do in the Shadows, his character's name is Guillermo de la Cruz. Uh, right before he's like, he's like, my name's not San-, or no, that line. He's like, my name's not Sanchez. My name is goes off on this thing. And the last words he says is Guillermo de la Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh, nice. Nice little, what we do in the shadows. Nice. Easter egg. Good yeah. cat. But see, they needed to use him more. He's hilarious. He's a good actor. Totally He's wasted. Awesome. Barely any lines. A lot, I feel like a lot of people were kind of wasted. Yeah. This movie was far from perfect. Uh, yeah. I do oh, have not some giving it a six, but yeah, I, I won't get that it. six. Yeah. Yeah, I just think there's some pretty valid, but for a first like time, and also like it's a nice little refresher for DC, who kind of stinks. Yeah, yeah, they've been dropping the ball. They've been dropping heavy. the ball left and right. Yeah. I mean, both both of the big two have been, but I feel like I feel like one of the biggest issues for this movie DC drops less only because they only put out one movie a year. So, <laughs> True. You know, I don't know if like, I agree like, with like, that. Like before this, Black Adam came. Out. No, what I'm saying is like they don't drop that many movies in a year. Right? Oh yeah, you, you know what I mean. No, that's oh yeah, point. yeah, for sure. And they don't do. They have only done one show, and that show ruled. Yeah, Peacemaker did fucking exactly rule. Peacemaker. But wait, Cody, you were just about to say something. You were like, "No, what I didn't like." Oh, one no, just one of the things I think the show suffered from the most is is the superhero fatigue that's happening that I think everyone is kind of experiencing a little to some degree. Absolutely. I'm not saying you can't make good superhero movies and stuff still. I think shows like the boys and invincible prove that you can, but I do think that just being a superhero movie isn't enough anymore. Oh, totally agree that you need to like that. It's, a lot easier to feel critical of these movies because we get so many, you know? I, I would also, like, yeah, I would expound upon that and say... Expound, I my would, dude. Yeah, you know, we're... Uh, we're not, like, origin stories. <laughs> yes! I think there's, that, like... Uh, I, think I don't want it anymore! Over, we're done. We're over origin stories, even, like, if it's a new superhero, and I get, like, the marketing mind is like, well, we need to introduce this character. It's like, no. Start, you can even do origin story. It doesn't have to be straightforward, like... What's the word? Just uh, do a flashback. Yeah, like a flashback. Have yeah. the movie start off the per- the person's already a superhero. Yeah, get it. Do little flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, get it like three minutes in. No, I'm I'm with you. What are you laughing at? Nothing. Keep going. I'll say it when you guys are done. You're gonna hate me. You're gonna hate me. <laughs> Thirty minutes in. Uh, you know, I just like I just the watching this. I was like, oh, cool. This is just Spider Man slash Iron Man all over again. Yeah, the origin movies yeah. are just done. Like we've seen them, but. The way you were describing yeah. it, you know what movie pulled it off well? They had the flashback. It was an origin story, but it didn't focus on the origin. It was Daredevil 2003. <laughs> 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 they did that. I mean, you're right. For, on a formulaic way, they did. And he was a souped up Daredevil. I was Emily actually brought up this point when we were watching Blue Beetle. She's like, in, in Daredevil, like, yeah, we see his origin, but when we get to the present, he knows how to fight. Like, J- Jaime, we have to wait till the very last act for him to, like, soup up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, he has the suit, but he doesn't know how to use it. Which, again, going back to the origin story thing, we're kind of done with that. We've seen it a million times. There's not much more to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're st- I'm done with origin stories. Show yeah. me full-on costume superheroes. Yeah. Because, like, dude, think, like, even just, you know, we're comic book fans, not every comic we read is an origin story. Even if you've right. never read the story before, you kind of just have to pick up like oh, these characters. Jake didn't start with X Force number one. To yeah. see, you know what I mean? Seriously, no, but seriously, like everything we talk about, like you're right. I didn't start with that. I haven't, a lot of these, like 
You just fucking read them. You you take them. Human Target wasn't an origin story. Then that was my first time I've, reading that character. I never heard of that motherfucker until that comic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, or you Fire know. or Ice. Like straight yeah. up. I'd never heard of Fire or Ice until that comic. Supergirl. Yes, another good example. But they sneak her origin in later on in a really cool way. Yeah, yeah. when she's chasing. Yeah, so like stop with Tommy the- Tommy K. It's Tommy That's K the, special. Tommy right K there. special right there. <laughs> 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 Wait, the Tommy K special is something I order from a... <laughs> <laughs> You said it on our last know, but human that's where I get episode. the name from. <laughs> it's Tommy something you order special. where? It's just at, at one of the takeout places I get. It's the Tommy K special. Nice. That's so funny that that's where you came up with it from. I thought you were just saying that. Yeah, me too. I thought you were just saying that also. Like, Tommy K. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Shout out this local that's business, funny. Anthony. Nobody's going to stock you. Support local businesses. Yeah, Who's this? Where is this? Oh, it's called Rock Body. Ooh, nice. Rock Body. <laughs> Wait, Jake's, Jake's um, senses are tingling. What, were you, what, what happened? You, you smell, yeah. I, I started smelling like uh, ammonia. Oh, what the fuck? Mm, somebody's about to kidnap Jake. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, the other day, or like last week, I, I there was a moment where I smelt like burning hair, and I was like, am I having a stroke? Is this how a stroke happens? Oh, fuck. But then I was like, I Googled, I was like, all right, like I'm smelling like, it's like this one specific area in my apartment. It's gone now. Because I dusted the back of my fridge. Because they're like sometimes the coils might heat up all the dust and everything, and you can smell that. Oh shit! And, uh, God, I hope I'm not having a stroke. Ammonia would be crazy. <sighs> Don't have a stroke on us, Jake. Yeah. We need you. Not live on the pod. Imagine live yeah. on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Dude, be like, but first, did Jake have a stroke yeah. on the podcast? <laughs> 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 well, now that's got to be the line. I know, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's got to be the title of the episode. Yeah. Beatle, did Jake have a stroke? <laughs> 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 yeah the fighting was cool once they got into it i just didn't want to wait till the end of the movie you know what i mean yeah and honestly the second half of the movie was like the first half was way better than the second half i thought i agree i actually agree big with agree completely. but that's because it was all family stuff and i don't know i i liked story-wise yes i think it gets weaker at the end or second half I do just like all those strictly Blue Beetle fight shit. I really enjoyed, especially yeah, like notch. when they're at the end and they storm that you know island bunker or whatever. When Blue Beetle finally like Super Saiyans up, yeah. and he seriously and he comes and he like pretty much has like a Blue Beetle Daredevil hallway fight with yeah. those guys. That yeah. was cool. That, that was, was a cool, a cool scene. fight. Yeah, he fucked him up, and I really liked. He made his classic like if you ever played Injustice Two, his like spike ball things. Yeah. yeah, like that was cool. He was fucking him up. He made like one of his things into like a giant hammer or anvil type thing. Yeah, like, no, he has a cool power set. He basically yeah, has the Iron Man suit. Power. It's just like an alien. Iron scene. Man meets Iron Man and Spider Man and Green Lantern were all yes, in one. Yes. Exactly. One freaky little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the comics, the the whatever the blue scarab alien race is from, they're like against the Green Lanterns. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I haven't read enough Blue Beetle. There's a really cool run. He hit the first time he pops up is like two thousand six or two thousand seven in Infinite Crisis. That's where the Omax are coming in and Batman has Brother Eye. Okay, I read that, yeah. Yeah. So Blue Beetle isn't that new of a character, that old of a character. Well, right? there, wasn't there an, a classic Blue Beetle? Yes. This version of Blue Beetle isn't that new. The older Blue Beetle, there's like a white, uh, not alien, just like a t guy with tech. Yeah, Ted Cord, yep. Yeah. Who's referenced, we get him in the uh, post-credits a little yeah, bit. and I do do like that they do have that classic costume yeah. in hanging up on the wall. Like, like almost it reminded me very because you can tell a lot of his aesthetic is where Watchmen draw inspiration from for the owl. Yes, yes, it's from Watchmen, the bug ship, the owl. Yes, but Blue Beetle's not a DC original character. He's part of that world, the Charlton comics that Watchmen is taking from, including Peacemaker. Like, they're not original DC characters. And then so 
when Alan Moore wrote Watchmen, it was supposed to be Blue Beetle and all those older characters that DC absorbed, but instead they made it Owl Man and stuff like that. So that's why it's very similar. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Is that that's a fact? That's, that's a, a fact. Real thing? Yeah, Peacemaker yeah. Peacemaker is so like the comedian the is comedian. basically Peacemaker. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Rorschach is the question. Like you see how they're almost exactly that alike. That tracks. Oh, I didn't even think about that until you just said that. It's crazy. Yep. Did you ever hear how they got Shazam? Yeah. Yeah. I think you told us that actually. You told me. Oh, did I, Cody? You know that story? Like he, he like he was a, ba- a Superman knockoff way way back in the day. Like another and, company. Yeah. Made a comic and they made Shazam. Yeah. And yes. DC sued and was like, this this he, this dude's way too similar to Superman. Yeah, and uh, instead of like they just like they took it, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like straight up, uh, which I think is kind of cool. Like I mean, it's still shitty. Like I'm sure they didn't mean ill will, but uh, it's cool. Like yeah, hey, actually, we're gonna take him anyways. We'll, we'll we'll take him and sue you. Yeah, we're gonna make him a part of our universe. Yeah. Now he's I a like dope. Shazam. I like Shazam too. Yeah, like, but if you Shazam. like, this is to anyone listening. Like, if you were to make a podcast, like weed and comics or any, nah, we we're absorb you and sue you. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, yeah, wait, what? <laughs> Whatever stops anyone from doing that, sure. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it Cody too. We'll fucking track you down. Yeah, dude, I'll hunt you. Which means you honestly, you got a lot of time. Hey. <laughs> hey. You'll, you'll live at least another 30 years. Hey, <laughs> I can track them down. They'll just hear me coming, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching Jurassic Park the other night, and I was picturing like you as Muldoon when you just yeah. said that. You Clever girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Muldoon. Yeah, dude. He's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I liked Blue Beetle, but I didn't love it. It was just like there. I kind of feel like that about most of the DC, like the first Shazam. And uh, I liked it in comparison to a lot of the Marvel stuff that's come out. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it just as much as uh, I'd say I didn't like it any more than I definitely didn't like it a lot more. I don't know. Aquaman, I was. Wasn't crazy about DC and Marvel. They just be flopping. Flippity floppity. I liked it more than Aquaman. I liked it more than Shazam. Yeah. I liked it more than Black Adam. Yeah. 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 Why did I like Black I, Adam so much? What's wrong with me? You know what's funny? I actually, like, I've rewatched, a, not in full, but I've rewatched a lot of it. And I was like, why did I give this such a high yeah. score? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't like it. I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't crazy about it. <laughs> I just... For a while, like the arc things that I, had, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I was watching, and I was like, I don't know if this deserved the score I gave. <laughs> yeah, dude, well, a lot of DC. I think, I think for us at the time, we were just kind of clamoring for any superhero stuff non Marvel. Yeah, little, that's a good point. We're little junkies. <laughs> <laughs> we just needed our fix. <laughs> that's so funny. This movie definitely had a lot of heart. Like that's I think what saved it. Like we're saying the family stuff, but it was so grounded and it just worked as like it almost felt like a '90s movie in a positive way. Like the kind of movie I they would have came out with, you know? Yeah. No, actually, I didn't think of it like that, but very much feels like a '90s movie. It did feel like a '90s movie. Like a '90s movie based in LA or Miami. Yeah, yeah. that's what. That's what. Pan, what was the name of the city? Panorama City or Pamera City? Yeah, something like Pamera. that. I think so. It was like clearly like a mix between like Panama and Miami. Yeah. And it's like, what, what were they? Were they Cuban? Were they Puerto Rican? Were they? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it was quite known. Just which I Latino. Like also. They, they were, were just, just Latino. Latino family. Latino yeah. Family. Latino communities. The the cast That's was true, predominantly yeah. Latino. There Everyone. was a lot of oh, yeah. well, most oh, people. Yeah, yeah. Down, like Jenny Jenny Cord, Jenny Brazilian. Yeah, you could tell though she looks pretty Latina. Yeah, just pretty much everyone except Susan Sarandon. Except for Susan Sarandon. <laughs> yeah, typical Sue. Typical. <laughs> typical Sue. <laughs> Man, yeah, her character sucked too. Like there is a villain problem a lot with movies where it's just like some movies get the villain so good and like. Not this movie. Like it just Dude, wasn't. Wait. Since we're talking about a villain and a DC property, I feel like we should touch upon the uh, Superman legacy news of Nicholas Holt being casted as Lex Luthor Ooh. in Sean Gunn's Superman legacy. Sean Gunn. 
<laughs> James, James Gunn. Gunn. <laughs> Sean Gunn's his brother. Yeah, That's Sean Gunn's brother. Stepped up you hate time. him, don't yeah. you? I do hate Sean Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome news, awesome casting. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do I it. I kind of hope DC, uh, with James Gunn at the helm, gives us something better. I think he will. I mean, I think he will. The casting alone for Superman Legacy is like, fuck yeah. Jimmy Olsen got casted. I thought that was perfect that's, casting. That's honestly some great casting. Yeah. Some casting. of the best casting. That's like J. Jonah Jameson level of perfect casting, I would say. I oh, agree. yeah. I agree. <laughs> I agree. That kid is definitely Jimmy Olsen vibes. Yeah. In almost everything he's in, especially if you watch um, Righteous Gemstones. Oh, he's in that. that. Nice. Yeah. yeah. He plays Danny McBride's son in it. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, it's, he's a hard Jimmy Olsen vibe. So. Hell yeah. Just that, like, that, that lovable idiot, you know? Yeah. Even going back to the Lois Lane, like I thought Lois Lane casting was I don't perfect. I know who that actress is. What's she from? Uh, Miss Maisel. Yeah. Uh, That's what she's famous for. That's what right. she's known for. Rachel Brosnahan. Yeah. She plays Miss Maisel, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy casting, man. I don't even know who the dude who plays Superman is, but I saw him. And he could look Superman. He just needs to buff up. He looks the part. Yeah, dude. I um, I, I I do. I don't know. I just I need something. I okay. Here's something I wanted to ask. Actually, uh, what what? How does this rank against the other superhero movies and sh- shows that have came out this year for you? Okay, which well, we just mentioned something better than Black Adam that came out last year, right? Yeah. Okay, this year we have Quantum Mania. Better than Quantum Mania. Yeah, better. Way better. Love Leaps and, Thunder, and Bounds. Was that this year? That was better last than, year. No, that, oh, that was last year still. But still, still better. better. Still <laughs> better. Yes. Um, I would say that this is probably on par with Black Panther 2. Oof. Mm. Maybe not. Actually, I take that back in yeah, retrospect. I liked moment. Wakanda Forever a lot. Like it was not I like Wakanda Forever a lot because of Namor, if truth be told. Yeah. I thought he was the coolest, strongest part of it. For sure. There's some I I want to compare this movie to the Marvels, but I don't wanna I don't wanna we can't spoil. until whoa, Jake. whoa, dude. I know. I'll literally watch it today, I swear to God. Okay, I, I I rank it higher than most of this shit. I like it better than fucking Secret Invasion. Oh, way oh, better. Straight up. Yeah. Better than Secret Invasion. I haven't finished Loki yet. I'm on episode four. So far, I do like it better than Loki. Yeah. But if I were to like rank it against DC movies, it's a, it's a lot better than a lot of DC movies that I've seen. Like going back to better like, than Wonder Woman eighty four. Exactly. Yeah, Birds Wonder of Prey. Movies. I liked it more than. Ooh, I, liked, I actually liked Birds of Prey more. <laughs> Cody, you love you that really movie. like that movie. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I love. I think it's it a good make movie. Any sense. <laughs> I think it's good. I think Ewan McGregor was incredible. I thought, I think it's overhated. I think it's an overhated movie. Whoa, I feel dude. the same exact way about Captain Marvel. Overhated. No, I don't think. It, I don't think either of them are stellar, but I think they're overhated. I hate Captain Marvel. I think I hate Captain Marvel like the most out of all the things I hate. What? Really? Whoa! Like in, wow. in okay. no, we, need the, we need. <laughs> we need to save the. We need to save the Marvel talk for when we talk the Marvels later. Okay, so, okay, okay, so okay. I don't want. I don't want to say more <laughs> about that. But I think I'm just saying in terms of DC movies, not better than Guardians Three. No, but that's not a DC movie. But yeah, and True. no, not better. <laughs> Not better, not better than Guardians of the No, I agree with that. Then. But no, but what I meant to say was like DC movies, like The Suicide Squad was really fun. I really like The Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. It's not Squad. better than The Suicide Squad. Yeah, so I no wouldn't way. go that not far. Not even close. But I, but like, this almost sounds crazy to say. Maybe I've been brainwashed by being online too much, but definitely better than Batman versus Superman. I don't know. Like, I don't want to. Ooh. Ooh, I don't know if I, I don't think I agree with that. Real, I but like weirdly I enough, Batman, I kind of agree with Cody. I don't know. If I, I think agree. Batman versus so Superman is also overhated. Ooh. I agree with that. And, Ooh, well, okay. it does suck because we talked to that dude who came on here. We argued with him. Carter. Was it Carter? It was Carter. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He argued so it, so it was the best. Batman Superman episode. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, like, <laughs> this might contradict. Like, yeah, it does deserve hate, but the Martha mm. thing alone. The fight scenes in Batman vs. Superman kind of slap, though. Incredible. The warehouse Incredible. fight with Batman and those dudes. Stellar. Goons, you know that's a good Batman fight. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're yeah, right. it sucks that he's murdering all of them. It, Ugh, it is. But... I get it. That's not Batman, but it still looks cool as shit. Oh, it was. was. Even the parts where he's not, like... Fucking killing people. He's doing some real Dude, Batman fighting. The entire movie, the action is stellar. The plot isn't the worst. I think the the weakest things are like the fact that Zod was Doomsday, Jesse Eisenberg, oh, you yeah, know, Jesse Eisenberg, yeah. 
We've talked about it, but <laughs> I think it's overhated. That's fair. That's fair. So, okay. Better than J- J- uh, uh, Joss Whedon's Justice League. Oh, yeah. Better than Joss Whedon's Justice League, yes. Yeah, specifically. That's why I said specifically the that. The Snyder yeah. Cut? I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's not better than the Snyder yeah. Cut, man. Okay. That's fair. It's funny, though. I don't think any of us will ever go back and revisit the Snyder Never. Cut. Uh, I'm going to rewatch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. I need, I, I need to find it. It's the best way I can kill four hours. Dude, we should do a live stream. Like, you know how people do 24 hours? We I was just going to say it. Justice League live stream. 24-hour <laughs> Justice League <laughs> live stream. <laughs> Oh, just can you imagine how dumb we would be by the end of it? Oh, but one of the playthroughs great. will be like quoting it like perfectly, yeah. like we'll be on fire, and then next one we'll want to kill ourselves. <laughs> we know we should do we should do it back to back, so it's to take up most of twenty four hours. It should be Joss Whedon first, okay. then Snyder cut. So that's at least like five six hours of pure live stream, dude. My, well, <laughs> We could also even start with Batman versus Superman, not a Justice oh, League shit. movie. The but. ultimate cut. Oh, the, the ultimate. The comics and chronic cut. Oh, yeah. Man. Why are we putting this on ourselves again? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're gluttons for punishment. Uh, we're apparently. gluttons. <laughs> okay, so maybe Blue Beetle isn't as... But I wouldn't like... I guess it's a weird comparison almost. Like it's, They're both superhero movies, but... What? Blue Beetle was just fun. Like, it, I guess also going back to like how it's like a 90s movie. Like, I don't know. I feel like I definitely, whatever. I'm not a movie critic or anything like that. I don't think we're just talking about movies. We You're like literally stuff. criticizing movies for this podcast regularly. Yeah, but like, <laughs> but like not in a very serious way, I would say. Like, I don't think anyone's like coming here for like serious movie critique. I guess yeah, what I'm saying is They're this, coming like, to the wrong place. Well, <laughs> well that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. Because honestly, like I, I, I go to, I like movies that are fun. Like, you, like uh, maybe uh, there's examples where you like, then you guys like Super Mario Brothers. what's your problem Brothers. with Super yeah. Mario? <laughs> <laughs> that no, is one still, of the- It's still a fun movie. And like I, like I keep saying, like I'm only kind of hating it for the podcast because it's funny <laughs> to see how mad you're getting. But like, no, <laughs> Daredevil is still better than that movie. But uh, what, what am I saying? What? It is not. <laughs> Blue Beetle is not better than Super yeah. Mario. What did I give Daredevil? I, I want to give it less now. <laughs> 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 um. What am I trying to say? I guess I'm trying to say like Blue Beetle's just fun. Like I, I, I don't need a movie to be perfect or like Academy Award worthy for me to be like, oh, like, you know, like, yes, there's superhero fatigue, but I'm glad this exists within that. This came out during the strike, so I know it didn't get a lot of love because of that. I'm glad I watched it. I recommend watching it for sure is what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's it's worth passing over just because Blue Beetle's a cool character. My son really enjoyed it too. Nice. Honestly. Everyone I, watched I know it. that's seen it liked it. Yeah. Same. I've only heard good things about it. But nobody loved it. Well, I just think I like, think a lot did, of people loved I it, honestly. Some did. Yeah. Colonizer. Like, <laughs> no. you, you wouldn't appreciate like, the love that goes into this movie because you're not one of us. <laughs> <laughs> I say us because I had an authentic Latino upbringing. <laughs> 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 well, I think that's the. Oh, I, think the I think we're at the. I think we're at the next E. Yeah, the next easy. The Pesci Nexi. The Pesci Nexi. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Wait, we also got announced uh, for everyone, dude. Anthony is coming out to L.A. for L.A. Comic Con. Oh yeah. Ooh, this will be out after that. Yeah, 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 you guys are time traveling again. Yeah. We like to time travel. Where he was just here. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Cody came up from behind, tapped us on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Classic. This one you least expected. And then our phones yeah. died again. <laughs> yeah. One of these days we'll get a picture of us in the same room. <laughs> I actually came across a YouTube video and I watched the whole thing because I didn't get that it was a joke like ha- until halfway through. Like I got the title of the video was I visited every McDonald's in America <laughs> and like the video is only like uh, eight minutes long, let's say. And the guy's talking about it and like he's like, oh, I kind of passed this one and this one. Like he never like he keeps showing pictures, but they're like blurry images of like the arches from like far away. So like he definitely didn't do this, but like it's, <laughs> it's a video made in the vein that he went to every drive-through <laughs> in America. 
I thought it was actually so pretty stupid. funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the same thing. Comic Con, LA. That Cody was there. I was there. Well, I'm gonna stand on business right now. I'm stand gonna on give it. Blue Beetle. I'll give it a solid five. Nice. Nice. Very nice. I ain't giving it that much. Whoa, Ooh. fuck you, dude. I'll give it three six. Three six. Ooh, wow. Whoa. Wowzers. Maybe a three seven. <laughs> 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 it's not quite a four for me, but it's not bad by any means. Cody, you know? Cody's a harsh critic these days. Well, it did have a family in it. And <laughs> yeah. only one person died. They actually became a more loving, stronger, stronger yeah. family at the <laughs> end. Something <laughs> Cody's never experienced. So yeah. it really triggers <laughs> I'm like, oh, Mac, <laughs> your love for your family makes you yeah, weak. <laughs> yeah. Cody Carapex. <laughs> 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 Perfect casting. Uh, yeah, Cody. Oh, yeah. We didn't even do who we are in the movie. Cody, you're Carapax, obviously. Would I be? <laughs> Anthony is George Lopez. <laughs> yes, I'll take it. I'll be Rudy. I'll be. Just because oh, he's you know, the tech guy. He's you the know? tech guy. Did you notice in his van he had Cheech and Chong bobbleheads? Yeah. On oh, the yeah. Dashboard? yeah. That was oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Remember, we're the only comic book podcast that had Tommy <laughs> Chong as a guest. Guarantee oh, that. Boom, shakalaka. Jake, you are Susan Sarandon. No, oh, I'm just yeah. Susan Sarandon. <laughs> no, no, you're you're uh, you're Susan Sarandon's assistant that she keeps calling Sanchez. Oh, Guillermo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like at the end, redeems himself. Yeah, yeah. but you That's developed fair. Omac to destroy. <laughs> the, the <planet>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I thought, see, I again, this goes back to Cody's, you know, fixations with movies. I thought he was going to cast me as uh, Carapax because, number one, he kills himself. <laughs> and his name is Ignacio, which is oh, the yeah. spell check version of my last name. <laughs> Actually, if we were doing authentic, not just like off the hips, wild style, we just did. <laughs> I would give you the dad for sure. <laughs> the dad? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I'm the I'd dad. Give Anthony the dad. Oh, man, I wanted to be George Lopez. And honestly, I think personality wise, Jake's more of a Joe Lo- George Lopez than Anthony. True. See, I, I would that. get myself Blue Beetle, to be honest. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm the grandma, if we're going off <laughs> <laughs> Grandma. Dude, when she just was carrying that mini gun down, oh, that I love. Awesome. I love that this movie just turned into a family straight up slaughtering people. Yeah, yeah. Like they, were, <laughs> they were just like committing so much murder. Oh, the bug ship! Yeah, that was the bug ship. Bug ship was cool, dude. When it's climbing the building. Yeah, yeah. But when they were walking around the base, you definitely saw a dude get impaled. Oh by yeah, one, no, of, the one of the things like he even says George Lopez says, "Oh, I just stomped on someone," and then. The sister says 20 points. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the yeah. yeah, dude. They're like literally when that thing lands and crashes into the island, it hits yeah. two guys. There's like two guys running from it that get c- c- killed. Dude, this Ita- this or Italian, I almost said this Latino <laughs> family <laughs> is murdering people. You know, as, they're as killing those people. people. They said. <laughs> 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 Uh, DC knew what they were doing. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wait, I, I forgot to say something. So going back to Ted Cord. Yeah. You know, we saw that thing at the end where he's like totally alive and somewhere. Trapped somewhere, uh, yeah. The director, there was, I think it was somewhere. And they were like, oh, like, who would you see like playing Ted Cord? Ooh. And he said a name, and I actually agree with it. But I, who would you guys want to play Teddy Core? I'll tell you the name after you guys. Teddy K. Teddy, Teddy K. K. Exactly. Teddy K. <laughs> Teddy K. Yeah. Let me think about that. I also didn't get my score yet, so I still oh, need to do that. Yeah, we, we got plenty of things to do. Teddy K. First, Anthony, what's your score? We need to get to the bottom of business. Okay, it's not a six either. See, I have. I wish we talked about the Marvels before this. <laughs> we'll talk you about have to it separate afterwards. Separate the two. You can't let the Marvels I know. influence the score. It, it it's not how the of, Joe Pesci scale works. Um, I'm gonna give this one. You need to stand f- on business right now, Anthony. 
So I'm going to give it a 4.8. Ooh, okay. That's respectable. So. I thought it was good. It's worth you seeing. Just not respect my 3.7? I thought that it just is a little low, but I mean, the movie's not, like, I don't disagree, too. Like, I... I, it, I don't hate it by any means. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't think that's a bad score. I think that's, like, it's okay. It's okay. It's better than okay, even. It's enjoyable. By a little bit. It's Pre-point fun there. and enjoyable, and that's, like, it. Yeah. <laughs> I would be down to see more of Blue Beetle and see them improve upon, you know? For sure. Yeah. I don't know if it counts as like I would go watch a sequel if I'm being honest, based off this movie. Yeah, I don't like you know how like DC is James, like you said, James Gunn is taking over. It's kind of a new universe now. Like I don't know if I think I remember them saying that the Blue Beetle character will be included, like probably played by the same kid, but not that that movie counts as being in the universe. Although I don't know why it would matter. It doesn't like. It's very self-contained. There's nothing like they mentioned Batman and Superman and stuff yeah. like that, but yeah, so they what? make Jeb, but they're used as jokes. They call yeah. him a fascist. Fascist, yeah, fascist. yeah. That's that was hilarious. That was yeah, funny. yeah. Classic George. Um. So Ted Cord, like, is it? Are are we supposed to assume it's a Latino actor? Like that's no, who would play no. him? No, no, he's white. He's actually he's a white, white Ted Cord. And he's okay. comedic and older. So the director said Jason Sudeikis. Oh, I can see that. I can totally yeah. see that. Well, I like I can, that. especially after reading Human Target in yes. one issue, I was like, "Yeah, I could totally see Jason Sudeikis being Blue Beetle." Yeah, yeah like that's that, that's that some good casting. Yeah. Also, like like after reading the Human Target thing and like watching some, I've only watched like four episodes of Ted Lasso, but I was like, "Yeah, he can give he can do Blue Beetle vibes," you know? Yeah, that's really good casting. Yeah, I yeah. accept that. Yeah, for sure, that works. Well, there it is, you guys. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. I would say go check it out. Watch it. I don't think you don't like. Yeah, if you have, if you're looking for something fun to watch, I mean, ever since its release, it's been the number one movie on eight on Max, and it deserves that. If I'm being yeah. honest, maybe three point seven was a little harsh. I I I, I could at most be coaxed up to, but I'm not giving coaxed. it higher than a four. That's fair. Okay. We'll let you bend the pesci. Bend, ooh, pesci. Bend the pesci. Sometimes when you bend the pesci, the pesci bends back. Yeah, so I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. (laughs) Snaps back. (laughs) All right, well, there it is. (laughs) It's a four. I'll give it a four. No, I think that's a very fair score overall. Yeah, no. From four to five. Four and up is acceptable. No, that's definitely like a watch it. Maybe you're not going to like it as much as we did uh, or as much as Jake liked it the most for sure, but I thought it was... I, didn't I thought it was a good movie. Valid. I just liked it overall. Yeah. Yeah. It's not groundbreaking. It is an obnoxious, uh, you've seen it before, origin story. The villains are one note. But the family, and <clears throat> when they get the action right, they do so in a way that makes it the rest. It's not that long. It's like two hours. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It felt, and it goes quick. It's pretty well paced, I'll say that. Yeah. It's pretty quickly paced. I just think like the unbalance because like the second half is not as good. I agree. Yeah, I it's just I missing agree. something in the second half. I'm missing that oomph. You that know what I really is. I liked? It was uh, when he first is like flying through the city and fucking up that bus. And there's those dudes on the bus stop like tripping acid. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is it kicking in yet? He's like, is it kicking in yet? It's like, oh, I think it kicked in. <laughs> was like, that was nice. a good line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> see, see next. Uh, let's super, see Marvel put a bunch of like, yeah. put day us, trippers put in us. there. We need to Boom, be the three yeah. dudes tripping exactly. on the bus stop. Yeah, yeah dude. Well, that's what you're missing. That's what they're you're not, missing. They're not made afraid to. They're too afraid to have people trip acid on their movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We need to be in Fantastic Four, just sitting at a bus stop on shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Strip, fantastic fire! You know the Human Torch and Mr. Fantastic, the, the thing running, and we're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Given that classic comics and chronic commentary, yeah. we can rank their form. Rank their. <laughs> 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 All right. Get out of here, fucks. (laughs) 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 Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.